All right, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Terabyte Reacts, and we are back once again to do some more reactions. And today, I am doing a video um, here about what the show left out. I guess we just bashing on Game of Thrones, <laughs> the TV show today. Uh, but the show left out this Barris and Sell Me fight scene. And somebody's exploring it a bit. I guess this happens in the book also. So we're going to check it out. See what this fight scene. I'm always interested in about anything about Barristan. Because he was a beast. Um, I think they could have done more with the character in the TV show. Of course, I didn't like how he died. You get what I'm saying? I just That's the only complaint that I have. I think, he's, I think he would have been a very valuable asset that they could have kept around a little bit longer for Daenerys. But... Um, and that's my only gripe with it. You know what I'm saying? All in all, he was a great character in the show and I'm not taking any way, taking anything away from that. He was, he was a great character. Um, as I said, just didn't like how they ended his life because he was starting to become one of my, I mean, he was one of my favorite characters. So because I, it's just because of that one scene, man. He stole that scene, bro. The actor, he just stole that scene when it when it when they dismissed him from the King's Guard. I mean, brilliant acting, man. Brilliant acting. Brilliant acting. Just stormed out like a boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's how that's how you what you what when you get fired from when you get fired from your job, that's how you should walk out like a boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's jump into this reaction, man. The show left out this Barristan sell me fight scene. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's let's look at this. Yeah. At 160,000 views, this video got flagged for a clip that was a little bit too long, so I removed that and tweaked it a little bit. Here's the final version. Sir Barrison Selmy was known as not only a great fighter, but also a man of high integrity. We lost him in Season 5, but not before he cut down a number of the Sons of the Harpy. This scene was sort of a loose tribute to an amazing scene in Chapter 68 of A Dance with Dragons. In case you haven't read the book chat, or if you have and you want to take a trip down memory lane, I'm going to share it with you in this video. This will not spoil anything from the show. This scene takes place after Daenerys has flown off with Drogon. His daughter Zaloric is still alive and he's ruling Marine in her absence. Barristan and some of Daenerys' other supporters suspect that his daughter is the Harpy. So Barristan goes to his daughter's room to get him, question him, and throw him into a cell until Danny returns. It's worth noting that his daughter uses legendary pit fighters or gladiators as his personal guard. So Barristan suits up, he puts on all of his armor except for his helm, and then heads up to Hisdar's suite. He tells the guard outside the door that he needs to speak to Hisdar. And even though it's very late at night, a weird time for him to be coming to Hisdar, the guard lets him in because he is familiar with Sir Barristan. He gets right to the point and asks Hisdar if he is the Harpy. Hisdar drops his wine and asks Barristan if he is mad, like coming to me at this time of night to ask me that? Only then does he realize that Barristan is wearing his armor. After a little back and forth, Barristan asks a second time, Are you the Harpy? And this time, he put his hand on the hilt of his longsword and says, quote, Tell me true, and I promise you shall have a quick, clean death. His door is put off by Barristan's interrogation and tells him, quote, You are dismissed from my service. Leave Marine at once, and I will let you live. Barristan replies, If you are not the Harpy, give me his name, and draws his sword. Its sharp edge caught the light of the brazier and became a line of orange fire. Hisdar then yells for his one bodyguard, called Kraz, who is in a side room. Kraz emerged from behind the tapestry. Quote, He moved slowly, still groggy from sleep, but his weapon of choice was in his hand, a Dothraki Ara, long and curved, a slasher sword made to deliver deep, slicing cuts from horseback, a murderous blade against half-naked foes, in the pit or on the battlefield. But here, in close quarters, the Arak's length would tell against it, and Barrison Selmy was clad in plate and mail. Barrison eyes him up and says, I am here for his dar. Throw down your steel and stand aside and no harm will come to you. Kraz laughed. Old man, I will eat your heart. The two men were of equal height, but Kraz was two stone heavier and 40 years younger, with pale skin, dead eyes, and a crest of bristly red-black hair that ran from his brow to the base of his neck. Then come, said Barrison the Bold, Kraz came. 
This is the writing of legendary George R. R. Martin. I'll keep going. Quote, For the first time all day, Selmy felt certain. This is what I was made for, he thought. The dance. The sweet steel song. A sword in my hand and a foe before me. The pit fighter was fast. Blazing fast. As quick as any man Sebastian had ever fought. In those big hands, the arc became a whistling blur. A steel storm that seemed to come at the old knight from three directions <laughs> at once. This? Most of the cuts were aimed at his head. Kraz was no fool. Without a helm, Selmy was most vulnerable above the neck. He blocked the blows calmly, his long sword meeting each slash and turning it aside. The blades rang and rang again. Sebastian retreated. On the edge of his vision, he saw the cupbearers watching with eyes as big and white as chicken eggs. Kraz cursed and turned a high cut into a low one, slipping past the old knight's blade for once, only to have his blow scrape uselessly off the white steel greave. Selmy's answering slash found the pit fighter's left shoulder, parting the fine linen to bite the flesh beneath. His yellow tunic began to turn pink, then red. Only cowards dress in iron, Kraus declared, circling. No one wore armor in the fighting pits. It was blood the crowds came for, death, dismemberment, and shrieks of agony, the music of the scarlet sands. Sebastian turned with him. This coward is about to kill you, sir. The man was no knight, but his courage had earned him that much courtesy. Kroz did not know how to fight a man in armor, so Barrison could see it in his eyes, doubt, confusion, the beginnings of fear. The pit fighter came on again, screaming this time, as if sound could slay his foe where steel could not. The arc slashed low, high, then low again. Selmy blocked the cuts at his head and let his armor stop the rest, whilst his own blade opened the pit fighter's cheek from ear to mouth, then traced a raw red gash across his chest. Blood welled from Kroz's wounds. That only seemed to make him wilder. He seized the brazier with his offhand and flipped it scattering embers and hot coals at Selmy's feet. Sir Barrison leapt over them. Kraz slashed at his arm and caught him, but the arc could only chip the hard enamel before it met the steel blow. In the pit? That would have taken off your arm, old man. We are not in the pit. Take off that armor. It is not too late to throw down your steel. Yield. Die, spat Kraz, but as he lifted his arc, its tip grazed one of the wall hangings and hung. That was all the chance Sir Barrison required. He slashed open the pit fighter's belly, parried the arrack as it wrenched free, then finished Kraz with a quick thrust to the heart as the pit fighter's entrails came sliding out like a nest of greasy eels. He wiped the sword clean on a curtain and stalked into the bedchamber, where he found his Darzaloric, 14th of his noble name, hiding behind a tapestry and whimpering, Spare me. I don't want to die. Few do, yet all men die regardless. He sheathed the sword and pulled his dart to his feet. Come, I will escort you to a cell. You will be kept as prisoner until the queen returns. If nothing can be proved against you, you will not come to harm. You have my word as a knight. He took the king's arm and led him from the bedchamber, feeling strangely lightheaded, almost drunk. Suddenly, one of the kid servants speaks up and says that his dar is being requested downstairs. It's strange, as if there isn't a dead body in the floor and as if Barrison isn't dragging the king. Barrison looks at the kid and says, what's up? And in short, the kid says, we have a problem. The dragons are loose. That's it. Basically, this chapter showed how badass Selmy is, even at his old age. The first half of the chapter all takes place in his head, as he ponders his many years of service and all the blame he places upon himself. It's a very powerful setup to the sword fight that I just read to you. Alright, we did a video about endgame clues based off of Season 1, Episode 1. And another for Season 7, Episode 1 will be complete soon, because it... That was pretty dope. That's pretty dope. And that's, that's, you know, and that's what I keep saying. Like, when it comes on to um, stuff that has happened in the past, um, as in, in the books, I should say, compared to what happens in the TV show, it makes the TV show um, pales in comparison. You know what I'm saying? So it's... um. It's just it's it just to me the way how I the way how I take it and how I look at it is 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 just basically that these things are going to happen. It it's it's what it is. It makes no sense for me to get upset and be like, oh, they could have they could have done this, they could have done that, they could have done this, they could have done that, they could have done this. You'll be doing this endlessly. And as I said, there's a lot of things that they that could have been fleshed out in the books. I don't know what it is, why they decided. It could have been that um, it could have been that the actor wanted to leave the show 
Maybe he had something else he wanted to do and he decided to kill a character. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe he was surprised that they that they killed his character. Um, maybe they wanted to do that because they wanted to push Daenerys in a different direction. Um, that could be the case too. You know, with her losing such a close advisor to her. Um, you know what I mean? Having lost having the betrayal of Jorah um, and all that stuff going on at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like she, when she lost, when she found out that Jorah was basically spying on her, she was devastated. You know, she was devastated. So, and then Barristan was there and then she loses Barristan and they might have done that for her to experience even more loss. So she has even more motivation for her revenge, taking um, King's Land and all this other stuff. So you never know what writers are actually thinking because you're thinking about it and saying, no, the writers should go along to, to how the book is going. But guess what? They don't have to. They don't have to they can write the story how they want to write it based on what based on George being an EP there and they could say okay I think we could take the story this way um because um I think we can get rid of this character to show to give her even more motivation and for her to to to, to get up and go, right? So it's just, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, we can only be out here and be, um, be a, 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 a critic, but at the same time, we have to take certain things into consideration. Um, because I've been a part of productions before. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. There's plenty of people that, you, that look into you to say, okay, can this be approved? Can that be approved? Can this be approved? Can that be approved? Like I've been in the seat of being a producer before, not for, not for film necessarily to go on the big screen, but for, um, small productions, like somebody trying to make a, you know, a production for their school or, or something like that. Like I, I know what it's like to be a, a producer, maybe not on a movie level or a TV show level, but I understand what it takes, the amount of work that goes into it and how people, how much people look to you because you're responsible for the budgeting. You're responsible for, um, approving the script. You're, you're responsible for all of that stuff. So, so don't think that producers jobs are easy. Executive producers, it's, it's a little bit different with them. Um, you being an executive producer, you could just be putting up the money. You get what I'm saying? You could just be putting up the money um, from your specific studio or maybe it's your idea or something like that. Um, so EPs are a little bit different from just being a producer, right? Because um, you can have a, you can have a group of producers on a production, right? And, and sometimes you only have like two EPs. So it's different. You get what I'm saying? You can have a, a lot of EPs too, but at the same time, most times you can just get credit for being an EP sometimes because um, you're putting up the money. You get what I'm saying? Like you're putting up the money to help with the budget for the film. So it's different, you know? So I know what it's like to be a producer on on set, if you want to call it that. So there's, there's, there's levels to it. There's levels to it and... I just want you guys to understand that just take it for what it is. As I've, as I've been saying, just take it for what it is. It's a TV show. It's one of the greatest TV shows to ever bless your eyes, your mind. You're, you, you get what I'm saying? You're witnessing something that you probably won't see for another maybe 50 years on television. You know what I'm saying? So... A lot of stuff is, a, a lot of people is going to try to replicate this. A lot of people, they're going to replicate, going to try to replicate what Game of Thrones did. A lot of people are going to come after and try to replicate it. Are they going to be successful? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? Probably not. 
So, um, so just enjoy it, man. That's what I say to people. I mean, look at what's happening with superhero movies today. I mean, the Marvel, the MCU is killing it. They are killing it, right? They are killing it. Um, DC is, they're slowly catching up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just enjoying it. Like, I'm not over here saying, oh, I'm a Marvel fan. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a Marvel fan. I don't mess with DC. I, I, sometimes when I see those arguments, I'm like, what are you guys so angry about? What's the comparison here? Oh, Superman is, is better than, than Thanos? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like... Why am I comparing? We do, and we also do this in anime too, with the, with the whole cross thing, where they're like, "Can Goku beat Naruto?" and all of this other stuff. And I'm like, "Why are we doing that?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just completely ruins the message behind these shows, behind these stories that we're told. It just completely ruins it because. Oh, oh, this character is so badass. It's way more powerful than that character over there. You know what I'm saying? And I always tell people this. You see, the time you spend, the time the time you spend arguing that, say, for instance, oh, Apple is better than Microsoft, guess what? I hope you guys know, I hope you guys know this, that Steve Jobs and Bill Gates we're best friends, <laughs> okay? So meanwhile, you over here arguing, saying that Apple is better um, than Windows. You need to understand that these guys are sipping tea together, and you're over here arguing, and you're not even making the the, the the money that they're making. A lot of times, guys, a lot of things that happens behind the scenes. You guys need to understand that even 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 products that are competitive in the market today, when you're talking about Coca-Cola and Pepsi, which one tastes better? Who the hell cares? They all sold them bad for you, <laughs> okay? You need to understand a lot of these, they say, oh, Fanta is better, better than Coca-Cola. They're made by the same damn company. Why are we saying, why are we arguing? Why are we having straight up debates about stuff that, you know what I'm saying? Other people, like the big bosses, they're sitting back and laughing. I was like, look at them go. Look at them go. They're arguing, and we over here making all the money. Because the more you talk about it, it's the more money we make. Like, that's why I don't waste time on, on having senseless arguments about stuff that we could just sit and just enjoy, man. Just enjoy the ride. That's all you guys need to do. Just learn how to enjoy the ride, man. Somebody comes up with, with something great, congratulate them push them even further you know i could tell you guys stories um till the cows come home you know what i'm saying because i have a lot of them because i i know people um i've been through a lot myself so i could sit here and tell y'all stories about and why why i say these things when i say them to y'all and why i say things the way how i say them because I'm the, not just talking out of my ass. This is this is stuff that there's a reason why I'm telling you guys to just look at this from two different from from different perspectives, but also appreciate both of them the same way. You get what I'm saying? Because there's no need to say, oh, oh, they shit all over this character and they didn't do him justice. Yes, that may be the truth. But do you know why they made the decision to go that direction? No, you don't. You don't. You're just over here with your little YouTube channel or whatever the situation is or your big YouTube channel. And because you have a voice, you feel like you need to voice your concerns, which is which is fine. It's your opinion. But at the same time, did are you enjoying the content? Of course you are because you still watch the show. So, as I said, just appreciate it for what it is. I appreciate both. There's nothing wrong. Like, I love watching videos like this because it's showing me another side. And I respect the opinion, but just don't go all out hating on the TV show now because that's where we going to have a problem. Okay? So, I see you guys, man. I just made two long-ass videos just talking about this stuff. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoy these two videos, man. Um, I'm going to try to upload as, as much as I can this week. 
um so look out for those hope you guys enjoyed these man i made sure i went a little bit more in depth in my thoughts about uh, basically i just concentrated i just made two videos just basically um talking about the book comparison to the show comparison and what my thoughts are on that process and i made it as you know two very long videos so i hope you guys enjoy them hope you watch them um i'm gonna be i'm gonna be um i don't know you guys are not gonna get any videos on thursday for game of thrones reason being is because i have six episodes i think six episodes of uh, anime that i need to finish up the season for and i it's going to be a super super reaction that i'm doing for that so due to the fact that i know the amount of time i need to do that i'm not going to be able to record any game of thrones videos but we'll definitely have videos ready um what am i saying you might just get some videos on thursday because yeah scratch that scratch that you guys will get videos on thursday they just might not come out in a day or um, uh, probably in the night because yeah i have nothing scheduled for this thursday i just just remember that so scratch what i just said um that uh, this is me thinking preemptively i forgot that i that i completely scared my cleared my schedule for thursday so but then again emergencies do happen to me people call me all the time and i have to bounce so it's you know it's not a promise but i'll try to get some game of thrones videos out for thursday but definitely you guys have these two for wednesday so hopefully you guys um respect my opinion of this um you know i've been having a, you know a couple of people that has been coming to the channel lately and they don't they don't understand they're new they don't understand what i'm about i I, i'm i i have no tolerance for negativity none don't call me names and stuff like that you are i know my game of thrones fans um subscribers i know you guys don't do that to me but i'm just saying it on this video because a lot of the anime community they do watch game of thrones too and they know what i'm talking about right because i've established that from earlier on that i you know what i'm saying like if i don't recognize something in a show that you've watched over and over again and it's the first time i'm watching it and i don't recognize something don't call me an idiot <laughs> you know what i'm saying like this is disrespectful because i try to respect you guys opinion whether it be one person's opinion or a group of y'all i always try to respect y'all opinion and i expect you to do the same for me okay so thank you guys very much for watching this um small video with me about this fight about Barrison and Selmy. it was really good um it's good to know anything about that guy because he's he's he he um, you guys told me that he's still alive also in the book. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that was a pretty cool fight that he had with that with that guy. So can't wait to actually read a, read this stuff, man. It's going to be epic. Um, as I said before in the other video, um, somebody in my Discord channel gave me a great idea because I was asking you guys what kind of ideas, um, an idea that I could do on Patreon, something original, um, something that you guys would support that doesn't include like reaction stuff you get what i'm saying like it's not i don't want to do reactions on patreon because i don't want you guys paying to watch reactions you get what i'm saying i don't want you guys to be paying to react that's something i refuse to do on this channel i don't want you guys to be paying i'll take i'll pay you know what i'm saying i'll pay for the google drive i'll pay whatever if i have a free option fine but i don't want you guys to be paying you know what i'm saying paying your hard earned money to watch me watch videos like i i just don't get why people do that and you know it just bothers me morally that's just my personal preference or just my personal gripe when it comes on to that stuff it's nothing against other people i see other people do it and that's fine if you want to pay for shitty content uh it, it's just to me, it's it's just to me, it's just crappy. You get what I'm saying? Because 
most of the time they're not even showing anything. You know what I'm saying? Some of some people they do it on timers, and I'm like, full reaction. I, why don't I just watch the show by my damn self? Like, why am I paying you to sit there with a timer? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, I just never got. These are certain things that I just don't get. You get what I'm saying? But if if you guys feel like you need to support people like that, by all means do that. I'm not trying to tell you not to support a guy. It's just that for me, I just to me it just I don't don't feel right to let you guys support the channel that way. You get what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't feel right taking the money it, unless I'm going to take the money and reciprocate it somehow. It just doesn't feel right to me. So thank you guys for listening as always, man. I know you guys are probably saying, Jesus Christ, shut up. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. I feel talkative tonight. So you guys get two really nice long videos for these Game of Thrones reactions. Hope you guys enjoy them. Hope you guys respect my opinion. And I'm looking forward to respect yours in the comment section. Leave a like on this video. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. Can't wait for season eight. Hashtag... Sundays for Game of Thrones. Okay, thank you guys for watching. It's your boy Terry by Reacts and peace.